All right, guys, continuing on with our test one review. This is our three phase RLC question. So one thing to notice is that the capacitors are connected up as a Y. They're usually connected up as a Y, and that means that the voltage is going to be less than the line voltage. So there's less voltage impressed across the capacitors. Um, and we'll find that the power factor is probably pretty good when this guy is connected up as Y. If you see the, the capacitors connected up as a delta, that's probably going to screw up our power factor. So where are we going to start here? Well, we're given the fact that our line voltage is 600 volts. So we know that the line voltage up here is 600 volts, three phase, meaning that from here to here, so if we put in line one, line two, and line three, this guy is 600 volts, from line two to line three is 600 volts, and from line one to line three is 600 volts as well. Okay, we know that for the Y connection here, that our V line is equal to V phase times root three. We know here that our line current is identical to the phase current, and we'll put the same rules over here. V line is equal to V phase times root three. And because it is more of a series circuit, I line is equal to I phase. Excellent. Okay, for the delta right here, uh, let's put the rule right here. So we've got the fact that our line voltage is identical to our phase voltage. Uh, but our line current is going to be root 3 higher than our phase current. Nice. This 600 volts is obviously going to each of our three phase loads here. Right? You can see that each of our three phase loads are picking up uh, line 1, line 2, and line 3. So our line voltage is going to come right across. That's our first step. Okay, looking at our rules here, the one where it has the phase voltage identical is on the delta. So we know that here our phase voltage is going to be 600 volts on the phase. Uh, but on the Y, it's going to be root 3 less. So here uh, we're going to have 600 volts divided by root 3. And we know that that gives us 347 volts on the phase. Okay, so this voltage right here is going to be 347 on the phase. This voltage right here is going to be 600 volts on the phase. And again, because this is a Y, this guy is going to be 347 volts on the phase. Beauty, that was our step two right across. Okay, now that we've found our phase voltages, the next thing we need to do uh, is find our phase currents. So we're going to break down, down a three phase circuit into a single phase load here. And here we've got our third step. And we're going to take our phase voltage of 347 volts here. We're going to divide it by our phase impedance of 35 ohms. We'll find that value. Okay, so what do we got? We got 347 divided by 35. That gives us 9.914 amps. Okay, so the current on the inside of the Y is 9.914 amps. And we know that the current on the outside is going to be the identical value, 9.914 amps on the line. Okay, right here, I line is equal to I phase. These guys are exactly the same. So we can bring our current up to here and we know that that's 9.914 amps on the line. Okay, we're gonna continue that same recipe right across. So here we've got for our phase current. So again, this is our third step here. This is 600 volts divided by 34. 0.64 ohms. So each of our impedances here is 34.64 ohms. And let's see what we get there. Uh, 600 divided by 34.64. That gives us 17.321 amps. OK. 
Okay, so on the inside of this delta, we have 17.321 amps. That's our phase current. And now we've got to find our line current. So in order to do that, we're going to take our 17.321. We're going to multiply it by root 3, and we'll find out what that guy is. So 17.321 times the square root of 3. It goes just 30 amps, okay? So we got 30 amps on the line. Okay, so this value right here is 30 amps on our line current for the delta. Excellent. Okay, so next step, and again, that was step four, right? So step three is to find, easy now, step three is to find each of our phase currents. So again, step three, what's happening here? Three to find the phase current, four to find the line current there. Okay. Know why this is not working for me? Sorry. Okay, so next one here we have 304, uh, 347 volts impressed across 10 ohms. Okay, and that's obviously uh, 34.7 amps. Okay, we can clearly see that if we have a phase current of 34.7 amps, then we're also going to have a line current of 34.7 amps. Okay, so let's drop that in here. So we got 34.7 amps on the line. Okay, now we've got a resistive load, an inductive load, and a capacitive load. And we've got to use Pythagoras in order to find our total line current here. Okay, so for this guy, uh, with our total line current, we've got 34.7. That's our resistive current. We're going to square that. Plus the difference between our inductive load line current at 30 amps, minus our 9.914 that the capacitors are providing. Then we'll square that guy, and then we're going to take the square root of everything there. Okay, and we're looking for a value that's going to be greater than 34.7. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got, I just threw this in to do this a little bit faster. So 34.7 squared plus 30 minus the 9.914 squared square root gives us the 40 amps 0 0.09 right so our total current here is 40.09 amps excellent so this guy is 40 amps this guy is 40 amps and this guy is 40 amps we had balanced loads all the way through so we're going to have balanced loads on our main bus there excellent okay so we now we found our total current there um, we need to find our power factor, uh, and you're like you're saying to yourself, well, I need to find my watts and my VA first, but you don't. You can find your power factor by using your line current on the resistive load and the line current on the total on the lines, right? Because we're going to use those later on in order to find our VA and our watts total. So our power factor here is equal to our resistive current, so 34.7 amps over our total current of 40.09 amps. Well, let's find out what our power factor is. The 34.7 divided by 40.09. Oh, good luck. Sorry, guys. 34.7 uh, divided by 40.09. That gives us uh, 86.5%, right? So it gives us 0.865 or it's 86.5% efficient. Excellent. So now we found our power factor of 86, 87% there. And now we're going to find our VA, our watts, our VARs uh, inductive, and our VARs capacitive. So each of these values right here are all going to be equal to our voltage. So our line voltage, so 600 volts line, 
times our line current of 40.09 amps times root 3. Now I'll save you from me putting this into the calculator. Let me pause it and then we'll bring up the value. Okay, so our total VA there is going to be 41,662. Excellent. Okay, our total wattage here is going to be our line voltage of 600 volts on the line times our line current of 34.7 amps on the line. Then we'll multiply those guys by root 3. Okay, so for our resistive load, we've got 36,061 watts. Okay, for our inductive bars, we're going to take our line voltage of 600 volts on the line. We're going to multiply that by our 30 amps on the line. And then multiply those guys by root 3. Okay. So for there, we're going to have 31,176. Okay. The units there are VARS L. And then finally, for our VARS C, we're going to have 600 volts on the line times our 9.914 amps on the line. Then we'll multiply that by root 3. Okay, so our final value there, we've got 10,302 var C. Okay, if you still have time on your hands, you can double check those values uh, by taking 36,061 squared plus 31,176 minus 10,302 squared. Take the squared and you should find a value that's very close to 41,662 VA. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me with this one. Uh, next and final question is going to be on the three-phase uh, power factor correction. All right, we'll see you on the next video in the playlist.